What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be sharing how you can use a vector pass to simulate motion blur in the compositor in order to enhance some of your shots in the post-production process. Now, a lot of the times I don't use a vector blur in my post-production process, and I just use the normal motion blur built inside of Blender. However, it does take a little bit more time to render out those frames, and vector blur can offer some fairly good results depending on the scene you are trying to create. I'm going to go through a few examples of when it worked for me and when it didn't based on some current projects I'm working on right now to give you an idea of what vector blur is, how you can use it, and when you should just check that standard motion blur checkbox inside of Blender in order to get a little bit more of a realistic result. Now before we get too far into the process, there is an advantage of using vector blur rather than just checking the checkbox for motion blur inside of Blender. When you check the checkbox inside of Blender, you're baking that data into your render and you can't change that data in the compositing process. So you're getting a more realistic motion blur, but in order to dial it back or adjust it significantly, you're going to have to re-render the frames that you want. So this is the advantage of using vector blur and I'll go through some of the disadvantages as well. But anyways guys, this is a project I've been working on recently and it's a little bit of a work in progress here. I just have some live action footage that I'm adding a helicopter, some mist, some snow, um, and just kind of grunging up the environment a bit. And then I'm also adding this kind of spotlight effect hitting this live action train here, which is a pretty cool effect. You can see that the spotlight is actually interacting with the live action shot and I'm going to make a video on all of these different concepts in the future as well as breaking this shot down once I complete it. However, for this specific video talking about vector blur, I just want to talk about the blur on the helicopter blades here. So in the compositing process, I just wanted to see if adding some vector blur in the compositor would be as good as using the motion blur checkbox here, which bakes the motion blur into the data of the render and gives a more realistic result. And uh, as you can see here, I'll go ahead and pull up the render when we checked that motion motion blur checkbox and you can see that the motion blur on the actual helicopter blades here is looking much better in this example and I'll go ahead and put them try to put them side by side here if I can try this there we go. So you can see that obviously this motion blur is a little bit more believable in this composite. And that's because when you're using vector blur, it's taking the movement of the 3D object from frame to frame. And then rather than calculating the actual 3D lighting on the motion blur, it's just taking the vector data of the animation and just copying this propeller blade over and over again and just adding some blur to it. So it's a little tricky to explain, but essentially vector blur is not taking the 3D lighting into account. It's just kind of emulating real motion motion blur based on the movement of the geometry of the 3D object and then the singular sharp uh, render here. So based on this example, I'm definitely going to be using the motion blur checkbox on this specific composite, but I just thought I'd share this example with you guys first before we get into how you can use vector blur to enhance your shots because a lot of the time it does work really well and you can get away with using it and save some time on your renders. All right guys, so to finish off this video, I'm going to go to a project that's a little bit simpler in order to show how you can use vector blur in the compositing process fairly effectively. So again, like I said, depending on your shot, it may or may not be effective. So it's just a matter of testing, but the rest of this video will show you how to use it if you want to do so. So this is the example shot we're going to be adding some blur to. And as you can see here, it's the same live action shot that I added that helicopter to, but uh, I've just added some jets flying by our scene here. So as you can see here, I just played through our scene, just a little jet flyby, moving pretty quick, but uh, super simple animation. So we're going to add some vector blur to these jets rather than using the uh, motion blur checkbox here. So before we get into the compositing process, there are a few things we have to do in order to export the vector data effectively in order to use the vector blur node. So what we have to do is for this view layer containing our jet, we have to go to our view layer properties here. And you want to make sure that you're exporting your combined beauty pass, your Z pass, as well as a vector pass. And this is going to give you all of the passes necessary in order to use the vector blur node, which is going to mimic real world motion blur. So go ahead and make sure all of those are selected. And then now I'm just going to go to render and render image and we'll get into the compositing process. All right, guys, so here are our jets just kind of slapped onto our footage here. And if we go ahead and close this and go to our compositor, this is our compositing node setup. Super simple. What we have here so far is just our movie clip. Then we have an alpha over node where we have overlaid our jet layer on top of our footage. And then all of this 
right here is just a bunch of color correction that I've added to the final shot. And then everything is going to our composite and viewer node. So super simple setup. Now let's add some vector blur to these jets. So I'll go ahead and go to our render layers. And again, as I mentioned just previously, we want to make sure we have a Z depth, a vector and a beauty pass output of whatever layer you want to add your vector blur to. So to add this vector blur, what we have to do is just press shift A and we'll go ahead and go to search and then I'll type vector. And as you can see here, we have a vector blur node, which we will just go ahead and drag right here. So we'll take our beauty pass and put it into our image input of our vector blur node. And then as you can see here, we also want to input our Z depth pass here. And this is so Blender can calculate where to add motion blur in 3D space. So they're not weird overlapping artifacts if the geometry in your scene is very complex. So super important to add the depth to the Z input here. And then finally, we want to add our vector information to our speed input. And as you can see here, our compositor is working here. You can see that now we have some motion blur added to our shot based on the movement of our jets here. Now, obviously this is way too much, but you can definitely see what is going on here to get a better idea of understanding what vector blur is doing. Essentially, it's just duplicating the main render over and over and over again across the path that the jet is moving. So again, unlike the motion blur checkbox where you're actually simulating motion blur in a much more realistic way, this is just kind of duplicating the one frame of data over a certain distance here. But we should be able to get this to look pretty good. As you can see, we have a variety variety of controls here to affect our motion blur. We have the samples, which kind of controls how much your data can be duplicated over the desired area. So for example, if we bring samples down to something like 10, you can kind of see what's happening here much more easily. It's just duplicating that main render less times. So the lower you put this, the easier it's going to be to calculate. However, this vector blur is already much faster to calculate than the motion blur. So I recommend just increasing your samples until it looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna try just maybe 64 and that should look pretty nice. So you can see it's kind of blending together a lot nicer here, especially at the edges. Now, obviously this motion blur is way too intense for our shot here. So to dial it back, we can just go to our blur input here and bring it down to say 0.12. And there we go, that's looking pretty good. Pretty good amount of blur there, maybe 0.15. Give it a little bit more. And yeah, that's a, you know, that's a good example of how you can use motion blur. If you're getting any weird artifacting, you can change the minimum speed required for the vector blur to be added, as well as the maximum threshold for the vector blur to be added as well. And another thing you can experiment with is the curved checkbox here, which just kind of changes the way the motion blur is interpolated. So as you can see, if I check it, I don't know if anything will change in this specific example, yeah, not much has changed here, so I'm just going to leave it off for this specific example. But uh, yeah, pretty, uh, you know, convincing motion blur. We can obviously color correct these jets as well to bring them into our composite a bit better. So we can add, of course, you know, an RGB curves, maybe bring down the brightness a little bit so they're not too bright. That's looking a little nicer. Maybe bring up the contrast a bit to match our original shot. You know, little tweaks like this can help make it a bit better. Again, it's a little bit of a slap comp here, but hopefully you get the idea on how you can use motion blur. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this color balance node and maybe just color correct these jets to match our shot a bit better. You know, something like that is not bad. So obviously there's a lot more we can do to blend these into our environment. I do have a tutorial on how you can create a jet flyby effect. So I'll put a link to that in the description below, but hopefully you get the idea on how you can use vector blur in order to get a little bit more realistic result. I think this is a good example of when you can use it. I do have an example of this shot rendered with just the standard motion blur. Um, using the checkbox here and it actually didn't look nearly as good in my opinion the motion blur was you know you can see the edges here even though the motion blur is technically more accurate uh, it didn't look as good to me obviously both of these are very quick composites so we could definitely make them both look better but uh, just an example of the render with the motion blur checkbox selected. But anyways guys, using vector blur is a great way you can save time on your renders as well as have more control in your compositing process rather than baking in that motion blur with the checkbox inside of Blender. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions or suggestions. Lots more videos and tutorials coming very soon to our channel. So I'll see you next time.